for you, if he's been a fence for you, then you know he is a protector, that he is a keeper, that he is a strong tower, where the word declares the righteous run in, and they are safe. Amen. Amen. Jesus, be a fence all around me. I'm going to get the right password. I won't be getting this PowerPoint. Praise God. There we go. You have not because you asked him. Come on. All right. Shall we stand? Hey, Dr. Torrin. Okay. Happy belated birthday, Prince. <laughs> to the Queen, Amanda. Amen. To all of you this morning, to our congregation, we're so glad to see everyone out this morning on this beautiful day. Amen. We know that this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We shall be glad yes. and rejoice yes. in it. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the sunshine Amen. in our lives. As we get ready to go into his word, I simply would ask that you continue to pray for Mom Doris Hamilton. Please Amen. continue to lift her up in prayer. Uh, she don't do text messages. Right. And she got more numbers than the CIA. Man. <laughs> She's got to figure out what she's going to answer. Come on. Hello. You try one of them, she'll pick up on one of them. Amen. 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 You call her by her pleasant voice. Yes. Amen. You try to bless her. Am I right there now that she will Amen. bless you? Yes. And something she said to us, that she's not afraid. Yep. Ah, you missed it. Yes. She's not worried yep. about what she's ready to go through. She's trusting in the Lord Amen. and the power and might of his hand. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we greet you again on this appointed time, and this appointed hour, and this appointed day. We thank you for forgiving us of our sin, thought, word, or deed, some way, somewhere, somehow, and with some who, we may have transgressed against your will. But we know your word is true. Your promises are yea and amen. Yes. That when we confess, mm -hmm. you're faithful and just yes. to forgive us mm -hmm. and then cleanse us mm -hmm. from all unrighteousness. And so we have a fresh start. <coughs> Lamentations 3.23 tells us that your mercies ah. are new yes. every day. Thank God for mercy pleading our case yes. that justice was cut off and for your grace that rendered the verdict not guilty by the blood of the Lamb. So, Father, we come into this moment. Thank you for Judah Praise for their preparation, their proclamation, and we know it is pleasing in your sight. And now we're set to go into your word, and we still need your help. We ask that you would cover us that we would not be seen, that you would prevail in this moment. Thank you for our ushers. Thank you for our media team. Thank you for the leadership, membership, this congregation to our Facebook online viewers right now and to the YouTubers who we'll see at a later date. We know there's a center, God, you want to save. We know there's a backslidden individual or individuals you'd like to reclaim. We also know someone's looking for relationship with residents here or with you. And we know you're more than willing and able to receive them. So have your way. Hide us behind your cross. Keep us under the dripping of your blood right across our minds and our hearts, the words that are found in the gospel according to John 12, chapter 21st verse. Sir, we would see Jesus. We've come to lift him up. He declared, I be lifted up. I'll draw all men unto myself. That's right. Yeah. In that name we pray. And for his sake we say amen. amen. Together I know we've already found Matthew 15, 29, 31. If you have it, say amen. amen. It tells me I can read forward. Or if you don't have a Bible, we'd like to provide you with one. Just slip your hand up so you may follow along. Amen. 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 And so we want to talk about briefly purpose. Forethought purpose. I need you to find a neighbor and just whisper, neighbor. We want to talk about purpose. Now use your playground voice and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Whoa, neighbor. We want to talk about purpose. We going to talk about purpose. Matthew 15, 29 through 31. I know we ready now. Lord have mercy. Just the King James Version. Here's what 
Matthew records in verses 29 through 31 in the 15th chapter. And Jesus departed from thence, came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee, and went up into a mountain, and sat down there. And the great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, the lame to walk, and the blind to see. And they glorified the God of Israel. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. Will you allow me to begin to, Miss Rachel, set in motion uh, in this atmosphere, Miss Jada? Uh, and to find common ground, Mother Baba, amongst everyone here in the sanctuary, uh, amongst everyone on the Facebook live feed, now or at a later time, and everyone who will view, CC, this moment on YouTube. All of us, individually, Elder Tanks, and collectively, Elder Reverend Stewart, has at one time or another asked ourselves, or asked someone else, this. Why am I here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Reverend C.L.E. and L.D., what is it that I'm supposed to be doing with my life? Mm -hmm. And Mother Marcella, how can I discover my reason and my rationale for me being here on this earth? Everybody, Dr. Wilson, has had this conversation with themselves or has asked someone else, what is my purpose for living? Your life purpose consists of the central motivating aims of your life. Uh, the reasons you get up in the morning. Purpose, Mother Sandy, and God uh, can guide life decisions, can influence behavior, can shape goals, and after a sense of direction, Dr. Adam, and create meaning. Mm -hmm. Queen Jane, for some people, purpose is connected, Dr. Barry, with their vocation. Mm -hmm. Meaningful and satisfying work, Mother Teresa. So, 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 there is an old age question of how can I find purpose, Belinda, in life? You know, I Googled it. <laughs> I did, Carl. I know you're watching, sweetheart. I Googled it, Henrietta. We call them the Google Queens. I Googled it, church, the same question, and found a litany, a treasure trove, all kinds of books and aids to help determine the answer to that age-old question, Mother Dorcas. What is the purpose for my life? Yeah. I'm going somewhere. I came across a writing, uh, Dr. Skip, by Tony Robbins. Mm. Quote, what is my purpose? Oh, how fitting it was. Google has everything. <laughs> if you're stuck, just Google it. Why am I stuck? And something will pop up. And in it, he provides a top list of things, uh, 12 things that will help you and I, Jordina, discover our purpose in life. This is interesting. I may go too fast, so you get to watch the video a couple more times and you'll catch everything. But I'm trying to go slow. But I'm from Philadelphia, and we don't, our slow is fast. So I'm trying to talk slower, Henrietta. <laughs> Number one, he says, and I quote, you have to search inward to discover your purpose. Everything you need is within yourself. Number two, he says, but purpose, put purpose before your goals. The goals you work towards must always be based on finding your purpose. Number three, focus on what you have, not on what you don't have. Number four, take ownership of your life. Number five, think about what brings you joy. Number six, develop your own life vision statement. This is getting funny to me because I know where I'm going with this. He says, write your own story. Take time for yourself. Embrace acceptance. Number 11, find your community. And number last, be flexible. Mm. Now all of that 
Reverend Stewart, all of that Elder Tanks, all of that church, all of that Facebook, all of that YouTube sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds great. For me, it was news I could use. If I'm only living horizontally. Come on now, Reverend. There you go. But set it up right. Set it up. Now that I have been born again. Come on now. Born from above. Yeah. Watch this, Marcella. Uh, 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 and not from beneath. Now that I have said yes to Jesus, and now that I've turned my life over to Him, He has control and reigns in my life. The horizontal words that just mentioned have really no significant meaning to me because I'm living a different type of... Come on! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. 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 I went from horizontal to vertical. I've been wrong. From horizontal. Come on, Reggie, help This is horizontal. I went from here to here. And the purpose here is not the same purpose. The caveat is that now that I've been born again, yeah. that I've been born from above and not beneath, mm -hmm. I've said yes to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I've turned over the control and the reins of my life to him. And he is now in charge. And I am trying to live the vertical life because he is now my Lord and Savior. So, 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 so my life, church, and your life, we should have left horizontal and now trying to live vertically. Come on. Yeah. And you may be asking yourself, well, Pastor, uh, what's my purpose uh, yes. now that I've gone vertical? Yes. Mm. Oftentimes, I, I find it interesting, Jada, that when new members come, that when we get to the part of the form where it says, what are your gifts? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I see them left blank. So this moment is for you, and it's for all of us who think that your purpose may be just coming to church, paying your tithes and singing in the choir, or even preaching at the pulpit, or podium, or ushering at the door, or I don't want to miss nobody, I want to sweep the whole house. Whatever it is you think you're doing for the Lord, this sermon, trust me, will help you see clearly your purpose in Christ. Come on. So here are our definitions for this morning. The reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists has or having one's intention or objective, an intended end, aim, or goal, creates meaning, offers a sense of direction, helps guide paths, behavior, and goals when applied to lives. Here are our synonyms for today for our educational extraordinaire etymologist. Hello, Mother Ethel. Motive, grounds, cause. She left impetus. All right, I'm still going to dress it. That's my girl. Uh, impetus, occasion, reason, point, basis, intention, aim, object, scheme, target, plan, goal, end resolve, design, set out, desire, and will. These are synonyms for purpose. Here are our quotes, and I quote, uh, be the person God called you to be, not what others want you to see. Unquote God. Quote, when you realize God's purpose for your life isn't just about you, he will use you in a mighty way. Unquote Dr. Tony Evans. Life isn't about finding yourself, it's about discovering who God created you to be. Let me say that again. Life isn't about finding yourself, it's about discovering who God created you to be. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Two more. Purpose is not what one does to bring home a paycheck. Mm. Mm. Purpose is what one puts on the earth to do with such intensity and passion that it becomes a spiritual calling. Yes. Quote, our purpose, loving God, loving people, for God's glory, unquote, Dawn Clinch. And here we are at our takeaway in our text, but first I have to lay a little historicity in, in, in background before we just jump into 29 through 31. And in the beginning of 15, when Matthew records for us that the Pharisees approached Jesus about his disciples. Good matter, we just had this conversation about what, 30 minutes ago? Why are they asking Jesus about them? You ever had somebody ask you about somebody else, but they won't go to the person? Then between me and Ganada, she's cracking up back there. She knows where I'm going. But I always believe when you want to find out about someone else, I'm not going to ask somebody else about you. 
I, I think I'm talking right. It got quiet. I'm going to come directly to you and ask you what I need to know because I know it's straight from the mouth of those I'm interested in. But here the Pharisees choose in verses 15, chapter 15, verses 1 through about 20 or something like that. Yeah. That, 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 why do you dis your disciples eat without washing their hands? Sound like my mama. Mm. Amen. Why are they eating without washing and, and, and breaking the tradition of the elders? Mm. Jesus reciprocates and asks them a question. Why do you transgress against the commandments of God? And so the conversation goes back and forth, uh, and you get this a lot, where a lot of people say, you shouldn't eat this, or you shouldn't eat that, or it's kosher food, and some of them have been eating pork all their lives, and all of a sudden, hot dogs ain't good enough for them. <laughs> but here Jesus says in short order, i got a little bit of time, that, that it's not what goes in that defiles the person, it's what comes out of the person that defiles them. So he responds and calls the multitude to him and said, hear this and understand. It's not that we're going to the mouth that the Father, but we come about the Father man. He then tells them a parable, and Peter said unto them, declare unto us this parable, and in short order he tells them what comes through the mouth and enters the belly and is cast out into the drop. It's just waste. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. Veils are they which defile the person. All right, let me move on because I'm talking theology here. i got to keep going to build my case. And here, here is the Canaanite woman whose faith, Jesus declares he's never seen such faith as her faith. Mm -hmm. Simply because she wouldn't let Jesus go because her daughter needed a healing. And Jesus says, I'm not sent for you at this moment. Mm -hmm. But to the Jews, I'm just paraphrasing the text. Mm -hmm. and, but Jesus is persistent and consistent Amanda, by not letting Jesus go. And she says, even the dogs are worthy of my family. The crumbs that fall from the table. And Jesus said, never have I seen such faith as you have. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Well, now we're at our moment of this sermon. So point number one, Jesus is in position with power. Jesus is in position with power. i got to say it one more time again. Jesus is in position with power. I need you to notice the beginning of verse 29. Mm. And take note that Jesus has departed. That should say something to us. That where he was, he's left the woman who needed the healing for her daughter. He's left the Pharisees. And now he's on a move. You always hear me say this, that ministry mm -hmm. always has movement. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Always. Somebody but then they might say, well, why is that, preacher? Because there's someone who has a need. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And so Jesus, left from where he was, Henrietta, he has a specific destination in mind. And every time he leaves one place, Jordina, is to go to another where his purpose can be in position with power. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. James Smith records for us, and I quote, Christ's public ministry began with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Every ministry must and should begin with the baptism, new members, it's coming next week. A baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because without him, you and I can't do anything for God. See, I'm going to be talking right in a minute. You can't just get up and sing on your own. You can, but without the Holy Power, Holy Spirit and his power, you can't preach unless you have the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You can't usher. Yeah, you can't usher unless you have the power of the Holy Ghost. See, because sometimes folks get on your last nerve. All right. All right. All right. All right, but his ministry and our ministries begin with the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Rachel, every real ministry must begin with this. So these are his first recorded words after being anointed uh, and filled with the, Holy, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He said, the Spirit is upon me. He has sent me the heal to recover the sight of the blind and to set at liberty the bruised, Luke 4, 18. So the text is telling us and teaching us and training us and testing us that the latter isn't just mere words. 
that Jesus just wasn't on talk, Dr. Jenkins, and no action. Mm -hmm. Jesus went up into a mountain, the text says, and he sat down. Don't sound like much. It don't look like much. When you read it, it's like, okay, that all? Uh, no. <laughs> he left from where he was. He went up the mountain, and he sat down. Maybe he was tired, Pastor. No. Maybe his legs gave out. No. Maybe he just needed a break. No. The reason why he left where he was, and the reason why he went up the mountain, and the reason why he sat down, uh, it was so vivid for us right now. The application is this, Marcella, that you and I uh, have no need and have uh, no need for no palm reader. Come on, Reverend. Come on. Come on. No need for anybody to tell us about our present or lie, excuse me, about our present or our future. Mm. No need to have a psychic read tarot cards and to predict who or what is coming into our lives or going from our lives. There's no need for us to get into a booth with a door or a curtain uh, and on. talk to someone who has no position nor power to deal with my sin. Yes. Come on, bro. Yeah. You're talking right. The reason why Jesus went up left from where he was, Mother Jane, climbed a mountain and sat because somebody is coming his way. Uh, <laughs> but you got to understand and preface this moment with this, that he's just not sitting there. He's in position with power. There's no one I know better to deal with who can convince us, who can convict us, who can deal with our conversion and our confession and to deal with our repentance. No one better I know that can justify us, sanctify us, and when it's all said and done, new members, glorify us because of Jesus' satisfactory sacrifice on the cross which he bled and died for our sins, God accepted and approved of. Watch this. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. It is him who is seated at the right hand of the Father making intercessions on our behalf. Not some man behind the curtain. On, not man. some palm reader. Not some lot. Okay. <laughs> it's Jesus. He's our high priest that is passed into the heavens. He is the son of God. And the Hebrew says, let us hold fast our profession for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but with all points have been tempted like we were, yet he was without sin. That's right. Let us go forward. Come on. Here we go, Sean Drew. Therefore, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You don't need nobody else. To help you if you just give it to Jesus. Come on, brother. Come on. Brother. Because he's in position yes. with power. Yes. yes. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Well, it's going to get heavier. We just lifted the beginning of the load. He said, I'm in position with power. Number next, Jesus received the lost, the broken, and healed them all. Man, I love this part of the text because I now I know why 29 is in place and why you see the conjunction. Uh, and that means it brings along its tie to and attached to the 29th verse. The 30th verse says, here's why he was in position with power. The multitudes came unto him. See, if you don't leave where you are, God's not going to send nobody. When you are already in position, if you're in position with power, Lord have mercy, Elder Stewart, he's going to send some folks your way. <laughs> you thought you'd just get saved and be all by yourself. I'm a secret agent Christian, CIA, nobody knows who I am. I'm walking like, oh, no. You in position with power. Come on. Yes. Oh, God. He says, the author Matthew says in 30, and great multitudes. I just looked at multitudes and the word great. That means there's no number attached. I can count high, Rob, but not that high. I can tire and go to sleep first. But great multitudes came. Listen, they didn't come to the disciples. They came to him. 
Having with them, here's the hookup, Elder Stewart, Reverend Stewart. Watch this. Having them those, I like that English, them those. Yeah, that, that be they. <laughs> them those. Them, I say them, D-E-M, them, them those. That were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. I'm going to stop right there because I get to he heal them later. All of them. Watch this. After Jesus left work from where he was, he arrived near the Sea of Galilee, went to the mountain, sat down in position with power. You got that. But the B.I.B.L.E. declares that the great multitude, many people, too numerous to count, Dr. Wilson, there's no number attached to them. They came. But it tells me something about these folks, the multitude, and them that are with them. They had to leave from where they were to come to Jesus. Can I help somebody in this moment? Come on, Reverend. Jesus will never force himself on anyone. You want your deliverance and you want your healing? You better come where he is. They left from where they were. Because they knew, Mom said, he was in position with the power. Yes. But what took me in the text, Reverend C.L.E. and Reverend Stewart, and church, is that they didn't come on behalf of themselves. They brought somebody with yes. them. Yes. Lord have mercy. Yes. Did you see that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> folks with problems. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get tired of folks with problems. <laughs> you have someone ring your phone and you look over, oh, I ain't gonna answer that. <laughs> Come on, church. Y'all yeah. help me. Yeah. See a text message, and you, you know it's lighting up, and you know you want to read it because you're nosy like I am, and you start reading, oh, I got it. Because ah. <laughs> the Apple phones, they tell you the text has been read, so you know they got your text, <laughs> and you wait for them to respond. <laughs> I am LD, I'm a shame and devil, brother. I'm running my body here. But they brought some folks here, Rihanna, with problems. And I need you to listen to the problems and we'll set it up and then we're going to roll with the Lord. And, and, ah, this is so heavy. He says, Marcella, these are they or them, I like to say back home, them, them, D E M, that are lame. Let me take them one at a time. Lame means one leg was shorter than the other. Listen to this. Making it hard or difficult, Rachel, to stand or walk. Here's the part that just floored me. And their lip couldn't be concealed. One thing I really don't like, LP, is folks who limp along in life. I don't want to drag you. Come on, stop limping and start walking. I'm talking to somebody. You got somebody with a limp. And one leg is shorter than the other. And the limp can't be concealed. Oh, Lord Jesus. You got to see this. And then there are the blind. Eyes were closed, making it impossible to see. Those who walk in darkness, they can't see where it is. They go. You have some folks like what you would let's like? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Ain't nobody but me in the house, bro. <laughs> then there are those who are dumb. Not like the dumb you and I think, but those who can walk and see, but their lips are sealed. Oh. And then there are those who are maimed, those who were plentiful and very painful. Uh, 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 they once possessed feet, they once possessed hands, they once had tongues but lost them and no longer can be used, watch this, here's a hookup, those who are unable to work. Wow. And then Matthew blows my mind, not with these, all that he just said, I'm already mindless at this point, I, my brain is fried. Then he says many others, those who are all sorts, sick, sad, sorrow, fever, broken heart, demon possessed, or any other ailment, disease or possession of fear, worry, anxiety, doubt, confusion, despair, or disability. I'm done. I don't deal with none of that. And here's the part, my friend. When do you and I find time for ourselves dealing with all these folks? After all, this is a me, myself, and me alone society, and I'm narcissistic at best. I don't care. That's your problem. 
You get some help. You handle it. Just leave me alone. So I can do what I want to do. But the text says they brought all of them to Jesus. Lord, have mercy, Rachel. Ah, them who were unable to come on their own. You got to see that in the text. They weren't able to do it on their own. They needed some assistance. And then were those who needed someone to bring them to Jesus who was in position with the power to heal them. The text says, watch what they do with them. They cast them, Cece, at his feet. They didn't just casually like Jesus. No, they threw them. When you look at the Greek, the word says to hurl. To throw them. And place them. The place where they would land after they threw them <laughs> was at his feet. But that's the Greek for you and I. They cast the word as hypto. It means sudden motion, deliberate hurl to the pilot that will place them at the feet of Jesus, left them, and they left them there. Realizing they had done all they could for them. Mm -hmm. See, see, sometimes mama and daddy, mama and papa, some of us or the children or grandchildren or whoever bam bam and boo boo is, who are acting up, you just gotta hurl them and throw them at the feet of Jesus. Watch this and leave them there. Amen. Thank you, sweetie. You got somebody in your life, you ready to throw out at Jesus' feet? I'm going to see her. She's about, she about seven years old, so she's clapping. <laughs> and leave them there. Yeah. Wasting your resources and you can't sleep and staying up all night. Mm -hmm. And they still acting a fool. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Ain't nobody else going to be in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Why, 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 why says that be at the feet of Jesus? Because the feet, Marcella, is the place of humility. It's the place of surrender. It's the place of submission. And it's the place of sacrifice. It's the same place Mary found herself when Martha was running around talking about why ain't she serving. It's a whole lot to do in here. I'm coming back in the kitchen. Yeah, I wish she'd come back and help me, Jesus. But she don't want to do nothing else. But just sit at your feet. Yeah. Jesus says it's the best place for her because much serving without hearing the word yes. is empty. Yes. Yes. Whole lot of folks are serving, but they don't have the word. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just look at Matthew 14, 25. These are the same feet that were walking on the surging sea in the raging waves. When you get to Calvary, these are the same bleeding feet at Calvary's cross that proclaimed victory through the, his blood on every sin to every believer who is now saved, delivered, and set free. And so the text says, I got to go. They cast them down at his feet. And I like the last part, Mama T.C. Ha, he healed them all. See, some folks, you make me mad, I'm not going to heal you. <laughs> You know how we have preference? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. They hurt me. Mm -hmm. 1936, I still remember. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't forgot. <laughs> he didn't do what I asked him to do, did yeah. yeah. <laughs> But you see, Jesus doesn't have any preference or priority or list of who's first and who's in the middle or who's last. I feel like preaching. He healed them all. Yes. That should tell us, teach us, train us, and test us that in our time of need, whosoever will, you may come to Jesus. There's no one that he will in no way cast out. Jesus will never turn any of us away. It doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter where we've been. It doesn't matter who you've been and I've been with or who you've done it with. He will in no wise cast you out. It doesn't matter the confusion, the crazy, the chaos, or the cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. 
It doesn't matter the lameness, the blindness, the dumbness, the maimness, the sickness, the sadness, the sorrow, the fever, whatever your flavor was, the foolishness, the folly, the fake, the facade, the flop, the floundering, the mistake, the mess, or the mix-up, when you cast yourself at Jesus' feet, he will heal you. Someone said, well, Pastor, I got purpose. I just don't know what it is. Watch this, Ralph. This messed me up. You don't see Jesus lining folks up by priority. There's no long line when you come to his feet. There's no application to be filled out. There are no questions to be asked or answered. There's no fee required, no prescription given, just help. Just healing and just hope. And Jesus will provide for whosoever will. Let them come and place their feet, place them at his feet, and he will make you whole. Yes. Jesus sits in position with power. He is the only help, the only healer, the only hope, and the only health. Watch this, Sean Drew, for a perishing world. That's it. Amen. Come on. Better not be looking to Congress to do anything. I love Joseph Biden, but he can't deal with my sin. Come on, man. He can't make me whole again. He can't give me a fresh start, a new beginning. He probably tried to do, but he can't. Nice God. Mama can't do it. Daddy can't do it. Jesus receives the lost, the broken, and he heals them all. I'm just talking about purpose. Here's our third point, and we're almost home. God is glorified. Jesus is in position with power. Jesus received the lost, the lame, the broken, and healed them all. And God is glorified. Watch verse 31. In so much as the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak. That tells you they healed. The maimed to behold, mm -hmm. the lame to walk, and the blind to see. And this is what messed me up, church. They glorified. You should highlight this or underline it. If you don't have a highlighter or a pen or pencil, right? Pick your finger, take some blood, and just smear it. <laughs> they glorified the God of Israel. That don't look like much, but watch when we get to the close. So you might not see it right now, but it should tell you something about God. Yeah. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Jesus is in position with power. He received, he received the loss, the broken and healed, and he healed them all. The record declares that the word in so much, the Greek word called him, because I know you write Greek. I'm not talking about Yannis or, or Cleveland Avenue. But here's the Greek, the, the host of Tesu. That is, thus, therefore, and wherefore, after all we've heard, Jordina, here comes the train down the track, ready to drop off its passengers. What it's telling us is that change took place. Change happened. And we can expect a change when someone or anyone is coming to or laid at the feet of Christ. He will change you. Hallelujah. Maybe I got two witnesses. Let me try this side. He will change you. Yes. He will change you. Amen. He will change you. You'll never be the same way you came before him and leave the same way un unless you refuse to accept him. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But see, when you're lame, watch this hookup. And you're blind, and you're maimed, and you're broken, and you know your good looks and your money and your bank account and your car and your house and your clothes can't fix it, and you decide to come to Jesus, there you go. and you are changed. Yeah. 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 All right, let me, let me work it this way. Let me work it this way. Let me work it this way. Watch this. Watch this. The multitude wonder. The Greek word is the muso. It means they admire with admiration and marvel. Those who were healed, those who were delivered, and those who were set free. Now watch this. 
I stopped short of saying those who were saved. Mm. Mm. Come on. Jesus will always operate on the horizontal first. He'll fix this, and then you have a decision to come with this. That's for the theologians in the house. But here's what messed me up, Marcella. Dorcas, here's what messed me up. Here's what messed me up. Don't take much to mess me up. I got a whole brain. Small mind. <laughs> Pee-wee brain. They didn't sit on their gifts. Come on. Come on. They didn't sit on their hill. Nobody had to pump them, Jada. Nobody had to prime them. Nobody had to poke them. Nobody had to pull them or pamper them to use their gifts. The text declares that when they saw them, they saw the, the dumb speak, the main to behold, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, they glorified God of Israel. They placed the glory with the proper person. But there's more to it. It says toward the God of Israel. So, 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 so watch this. Watch this. That should tell you something. That when they came in their lameness and their blindness and their dumbness uh, and their maimness and their brokenness, wherever they came from, there was no God there that could heal. Oh, don't you miss that? Couldn't heal with them, Jada. Couldn't heal them, Amanda. And so when they recognized that the God of Israel, watch this, who was not their God, Mm. Or they would have said, our God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's telling us and teaching us and training us and testing us to believe and no one understand. God was not only the God of Israel. Don't miss this. Mm. Don't miss this. But he is the God of all of us. Come on. Blind, lame, broken, dumb, whatever your lot. He loves everybody. I don't care if you're white, black, right. pink, tan, yellow, polka dot, green, whatever the color you are. Everybody, God loves them the same. He was not only for Israel, but for them as well. And he's back then the same. He's still the same today. In other words, what took place, watch this, Ralph, I'm closing, next should not come to a surprise, should not come and, 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 and blow our minds all that much and, and say, you know what, I never even thought about that, Pastor. What a moment this is. Uh, it should be mind-blowing, uh, uh, Jordan, an earth-shaking, an earth-shattering moment, and leave our mouths hung open and utter the words, what in the world just happened? We shouldn't see it that way. Should we expect anything different from God? That's right. When Jesus is in position with power, and when those who come to him, just as they are, believing and knowing when they are cast down at his feet, hurled down at his feet, and placed at his feet in humility, he will in no wise cast them out. He won't send them back home the same way they came, and he won't dismiss them claiming they don't deserve to be saved. They don't deserve to be delivered. They don't deserve to be healed. They don't deserve to be helped. You know how we are. We get attitude. Yeah. Maybe my mic stopped working now, baby. But Jesus will in no wise cast them out. I'm at my clothes. I got to go. The Spirit is saying, you're out of time, son. Skip, will you hit this? Will you hit this? There we go. See, I need help, too. It takes all of us to do this. I need you to read that. I need you to read that. Just take your time and read that. Broken bread and spilled wine. Mm -hmm. Broken bread and spilled wine. So, 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 how is all of this illumination, all of this revelation? I hear you, Reverend Cielo. Yes. How is all this applicable 
in our lives, July 24, 2022. Somebody's asking that, well, what that got to do with my purpose? But if you're Christ like minded and you call yourself a Christian, it's your purpose. So you don't have to guess after today if that was your lot. Because what the text is telling us and teaching us about Henrietta is that there are folks who are lame. Watch this. I'm not talking about physical. See, I went vertical now. That was horizontal that Jesus healed. But then there are those vertically and, and lack of spirituality and who God is or walking around us every day in our life and maybe even in our home whose leg may be shorter than the other and you've been walking around and trying to bring them with you and they have a lift. There are those who are blind spiritually who can't see God in the midst of their triangle or tribulation. There are those who are dumb spiritually who can't speak to God or pray to God or talk to God because they're too full of the world. And then there are those who are made. You ain't see all that coming, did you? Me either. That Jesus is asking us, just like in the text, to bring them. That's your purpose. Is to take the lame, take the blind, take the maimed, take the dumb, take anybody else who's broken, whose life is shattered, who's messed up, messed up, and going Google for Google box. You gotta bring them to Jesus. Place them at his feet and let him heal them. That's our purpose. That's why we are here. That's our purpose. That's why we're here. Yes, yes, yes. You can't worry about you being too mixed up and nothing. We already know that. But when he heals you, I got the story. And you see his purpose. Wrapped up in your, that's your purpose. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Today we roll past somebody who was sleeping on a bench right on Main Street. We knew they were homeless because we could just look and see. That's our purpose. When we left New Members yesterday, a woman came up to the steps and said, what does this church do for the community? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's our purpose. Yeah. And she has a plan. Yeah. And put it in my head. And I said, what's your phone number? It's on the card. And I'm going to call her. Because yeah. our purpose is just not coming Sunday morning, yeah. smelling good and looking good, hair all off and clothes on the crest of the Oh, no. Our purpose is for those who are blind spiritually, those that are lame spiritually, those who are dumb spiritually, those who are made spiritually, and I like the text because Jesus includes everybody, yes. anybody else. Yep. Bring them to his feet. Yes. Yes. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. I ain't see all that in the text. It was so short. I'm like, why, uh, why you got me here? Yes, God. And I was convinced, convicted, and converted when I read this. And he said, now you're going to preach it. Yeah. We did it first. Yeah. Come on, preachers. Yeah. When any of us will read scripture, yeah. you get it first before you can share with somebody else. Yeah. So we're not leaving here today. Come on, Reverend. Ignorant, yeah. meaning without knowledge. Yes, sir. It's commission now, new members. Oh, yeah. Come on now. With knowledge. <laughs> now that you know. Yeah. Yeah. That that's your purpose. Yeah. And here's why. Here's why. Mm -hmm. Them that are lame, mm -hmm. them that are blind, mm -hmm. them that are dumb, mm -hmm. them that are maimed, and any other brokenness around you yep. or in your house, mm -hmm. they're not supposed to glorify you. That's right. That's right. It's yeah. the God you serve. Yeah. That he can get the glory, that he can get the honor, and that he can be praised. You know what makes God smile? When we bring folks to him. Because 2 Peter 3, 9 has it that none should be lost. That all should come to repentance. You and I don't get to pick and choose who we're going to minister to. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, Shelly, I don't want to 
going to talk to him because he don't like me. <laughs> I know I need help, but I ain't going to give it to him. <laughs> he didn't deliver us to pick and choose right. who we going to bring to him. Come on. We got folks in our own homes. Mm -hmm. Let's start right there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. On our jobs. Mm -hmm. If that's not heavy enough for you, that's just right. walk up and down Main Street. Right. Every corner you see, there's somebody with a sign asking you for money. Mm -hmm. I get an attitude. Yep. Can I tell the truth and be delivered? Okay. I give you my money. I don't know what you're going to do. They got plenty of jobs out here. They hard. <laughs> what you doing? What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? But then it dawned on these they may not have an address mm -hmm. to fill out an application with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The queen is saying that some have mental illness and they can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my son taught me something valuable yesterday on a conversation. That's why you need folks like Christ minded around you. Because they can pour into you just as much as you can pour into them. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, maybe we don't understand where they come from, That's right. That's right. where they've been. Because people from the 40s are not like 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and yeah. 90s. So I want to look at your prosperity. I look at Mother Ethel's prosperity. That's a whole new generation. Yeah. We're going to have to reach them differently than how we were reached. Right. You better get used to it. You better get used to it. You raising children right now? Because here's the, here is the motion I, and, and the uh, soberness of this, Henrietta. You and I can sing this course, course together. When they grow up, they're going to be making decisions for you. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, uh -huh. That's right. Hold on, Ralph. Right. You mean Brandon's got the bed? Yeah. Right. You mean Nina's got the bed? Yeah. Right. They're going to be making torn. Tim, he's going to be making decisions. Live long enough, I'm telling you. Yeah. That's true. My son is doing it now with her and I, our son. We follow him around like we're the children, he's the parent. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. When you look at the Nessa Bible, she ain't that far away in Priya. She's there now. And Isaac and Isaiah, they gonna be making decisions for y'all. And I got sober real quick. I gotta treat him right. I gotta treat her right. I gotta treat him right. I gotta treat him right. I gotta treat him right. I gotta so my son told me, Daddy, you going in the nursing home. Mama, you coming to live with me. I got to change your I got to change. I got to change. I got to change. I'm going to be with you. I told him I'm going to run away every day. I'm going to run away. I'm going to run away. I'm going to come. I'm going to find out where you at. All the time, the bitch ain't got nothing to stop me. I'm coming. But in all of that silliness, and here's the soberness. Now I know you look at the morning like, man. Woohoo! <laughs> Imani, Malaysia, if you watch this, sweetheart, soon they will be making decisions for us. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You all right, JT? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Think about it. But here's this moment that we can't escape and get rid of that. Bear, elder, you're going to be making decisions. <laughs> that's the heir to the throne. That's right. Yeah, it is. That's right. Listen. That's right. Listen. That's right. And that's pray right. they don't forget him. That's right. Or, that's right. or you. That's right. And he lost his mind. I'm good now. I'm running. Right. That's right. That's right. Rachel there next. She's got help. Rachel got help. Rachel got help. Well, watch this and I got to go. It's our purpose. Yes. Yes. Why God created us yes. is to give him glory. Yes. Is yes. to bring others. Yes. And I like the text. I know I love the text. I, I, I love it. Look at all the brokenness. Mm. And he healed them all. Yes. yes, he did. Just like he healed us. Yeah. I got to go. Because some of us had a walk, Jordana. We had a dip in our hip and a mm. glide in our stride. Yeah. Thought we were something. Right. Right. Bag of chips and all that. Yeah. But God says there was a lip yeah. that you couldn't conceal. Yeah. Some of us have been blind spiritually all those years. Yeah. Walking around thinking we was all that. Yeah. Baddest thing between a pair of shoes. Right. Come on somebody. Yeah. All of us were dumb. We couldn't speak about Jesus. Didn't want to put him in our mouth. Right. Could care less about who he was. 
And if some of us were made, we didn't want to serve him ever. Yeah, that's right. Watch this. And then there are many others. So I don't forget any of us. Because all of us are in this text. Watch this. Somebody brought us to Jesus. Yeah. 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 And placed us. Whether it was the preacher, mm -hmm. your mama, yep. daddy, grandma, papa, mama, papa, whoever or yeah. auntie, unk, yeah. cousin Neil, mm -hmm. somebody bought you mm -hmm. and placed you and watched it and he healed you. Yeah. 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 You didn't leave the same way you yeah. came in. Yeah. Yeah. You were changed. Yeah. And I struggled for a little while about my purpose mm. now that I was saved. Mm. Watch this, new members. Until I read about the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. that it was his baptism. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. See, I thought it was just a bath. No. Mm -hmm. Somebody just dumped you down, you got wet and came back up. I need a towel, I can't see that. Uh -huh. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. But it's the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yes. Tell the truth. Who will win? He, he's your paracletos, the Greek yeah. word is. Yeah. He's called alongside of you to walk with you, watch this, as you recover from your limp, as you recover from your blindness, as you recover from your dumbness, as you recover from your madness, or any other element that you have a problem you have, he with you and he enables you to live the Christian life, not so you can just come and go home and give a tithe, but find somebody who is just like you, or who is sick and shunned, who is hurting, who is in prison, and set him at the feet of Jesus, and let them give God the glory. That's our purpose. That's why we've been saved. Oh, yeah, the word is right. Yeah. Make no mistake about it. And God's not going to give you more before you're going to come across somebody. That what you just heard, you're going to get your helmet on. Even just can't be a spectator. Yes. You ain't getting paid up to get up in here. Yes, yes, yes. Show God. See, see, see. Let me, I got to get out of here, Sean. Most people think, I wouldn't have that problem here. <laughs> Most people think it's the pastor's job to fill the chairs. Oh, no. Hey. Yeah. 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 That's true. It's all true. of our jobs. Yeah. What the P-A-S-T-O-R job is, that when they get here, him or her should be preaching the word of God so that they can get saved, get healed, get delivered, and be set free. And I know, I know, I know the baddest school tent this side of the Mississippi is singing strong enough, and I know no credit of my own that the word of God, whether it's Stuart, uh, Edwards or Barry or Fields, whomever stepped in this pulpit, is preaching strong enough that Jesus is lifted up and we lay him at his feet and let him save him. I know that. I know this place. I can't speak for nowhere else. But you will hear the word of God here. We ain't got no tricks up our That's bad. Ain't the same God. We don't. No, we don't got no type of tricks or, 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 or charms or cantations or spells. We ain't trying to trick you with no gas cars. Come on in and fill the seat. We got gas cars and TVs we want to give away. Oh no! No fish fry, no chicken being burnt up in here. And no tater salad, little no green. Simply the word. Of God all by Himself is able. You notice Jesus ain't had no help. That's right. That's right. Oh, let me take a break out for lunch. I'll be back. You want to step in? You don't send nobody. He heals them all. And I got so many folks in here that all these folks I know that have said yes to Him. You've been healed of your sin, sin condition because the blood. Never, ever, 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 after like this couple, ever, 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 ever yeah. will lose its power. That's right. That's right. My God. That's right. Amen. Yeah. 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 Now we know our purpose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to curse right now. Now we know our. <laughs> That's right. 
the reason why we sing. That's right. Yeah, that's the reason why. Yeah. We got purpose now. We're not leaving here. We'll pass that. What did you say? We got a good time. Today, July 24, 2022. Facebook, YouTube, later on. Now you know your purpose. Bring those who are broken, lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and anybody else with any illness or brokenness. Bring them and set them at his feet. And let God get the glory. Yes. Yes. I'm out of time. I'm not talking. My twin brother taught me, uh, Tim in Atlanta, I'm, ti I'm not tired. I'm not tired. It's fine. That's right. That's right. Y'all got him and say, amen. <laughs> <laughs> I got to stop right here. But we're getting ready for communion. Skip uh, as we prepare. But before you do that, let me open up the doors of the church. I don't want to miss this step. There may be somebody here. I need your eyes closed and heads bowed. Hearts open and ears attentive. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Somebody here may have a brokenness. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, Pastor, well, my arms work, my fingers work, my legs work, my feet work. I'm not talking just physical, I'm talking spiritual. Mm -hmm. That the brokenness caused by sin mm -hmm. has left you lame. Mm -hmm. And watch this the limp can't be concealed. Mm -hmm. Somebody's blind mm -hmm. by the world. <laughs> The dictates of the flesh. And you can't see Jesus. And you're living in darkness. Watch this. Well, my lights are on, Pastor. No, I'm talking about spiritual. I ain't talking about AEP or Southern Central. You just can't, but you're in darkness. I want to help. This is a moment of help and hope and healing. Listen, well, Pastor, I'm not dumb. I can talk fine. Yeah, according to the world. But once you have Jesus, there's a different conversation and a different dialogue that takes place. Well, Pastor, I'm not main. The reason why God sent you here, as you heard earlier, a few minutes ago, is your purpose is not in use. That you're not working on his behalf. Because if you and I were, we would not be so selfish, not so self-centered, not so egotistical, and not so self-narcissistic. Listen, that we would get up off ourselves and get someone and lead someone and place them at his feet who needs him. Yeah. It's not about us. It's all about him. And you've never said yes to Jesus and your brokenness. That's between you and we're vertical now. That's between you and him. I do know that heaven's waiting to record your name in the last book of life. If you would just step out, just like they came. And you say, well, Pastor, you, you said they had somebody to bring them. There's somebody to bring you. He's the Holy Spirit. He's nudging you and talking to your heart right now, and he wants to bring you. If you'll get up from where you are, if you're online, if you're here in the sanctuary, or if you're on YouTube later, you can communicate to us in a different manner. But right here in the center, if that's you and you've never said yes, and you're not certain where your destiny is. I'm not talking about how the world defines destiny. I'm talking about your eternal. Where you'll spend eternity. It's either above or below. Mm -hmm. Let me make it plain. I'm not trying to scare you. And I don't want to be morbid or macabre, but it's either above in heaven or below in hell. You can come forward. Give your life to Christ. Say yes to him. That I recognize I'm a sinner. That I've missed the mark of God. That I've transgressed. And I know Jesus paid the price. There was no one and nothing else or a substitute that could help me in this moment but him. Who God accepts and who God approves of. It's his blood That's it. that paid the price. Come on. You can come forward if, you're, if you've been with Jesus before and you left him, you was in love with him, but you had church hurt, or somebody hurt, or anybody hurt you, and you don't want to deal with church folk, well, you ain't dealing with church folk. You're, you're associated in fellowship with Christians, like-mindedness. And you left the church, and you want to come back, and this is the place, you can come forward. You can write me online. Or if you're looking for residence, here with us, the fellowship, where we will encourage you, we'll embrace you where you are, We'll encourage you on your walk, and we'll equip you with the Word of God. We'll partner together. I promise you at least those three things, that we can become family in the body of Christ. 
If that's you and you want to make up your mind and your heart is fixed, your mind is made up, and this place is the place where you, God is leading you to, but more importantly, to Jesus Christ first, then you can come forward. I want to take a moment, Skip, if you play uh, um, Walter Hawkins, Marvin, I think it's Walter Hawkins, Marvelous, and let that play Sean, if, if you and Elder Tanks, uh, Elder Stewart, uh, Reverend Cielli, y'all come forward. We're going to roll this community table, uh, the communion table in front of us.